Hey guys, welcome to Happy Face Hold'em. Big shout out to Tim at Lucky Lady Casino for hosting our meetup game. If you missed that video, I'll put a card to it right up there, so be sure to check that out. And uh, this one, we're back at the tables with card footage, everything you've come to expect from my channel. So thank you again for everybody who's subscribed and liked the video. This is a great time. Smash the thumbs up before you get started. Subscribe down below if you haven't already. That really helps the channel out a ton. Greatly appreciate it. And don't forget to check out Rad Poker. It's free. Heads up, tournament play, four minutes a game, six seconds to make a decision, and the top players are gonna get a staking contract, so be sure to check it out. Link in the description below. I went into the restroom and found myself partaking in some risky activity. Yeah, guys, that's right. Welcome back to Happy Face Hold'em. These are my fancy Charlie cards, and these right here, these are my Charlie chips. We like to get as many of these in every session as we can. And why do I call it Happy Face Hold'em? Well, we have a happy face mode right into the side of the hill in the town I live in. This is vlog number 39, getting it at Commerce. What up guys? It's uh, April 23rd, it's a Friday. It's about 11.30 and uh, we're off to play some 5-5 five five cards. A buddy of mine um, wanted to play earlier in the day, so my work laptop is tied up, so I'm free. So we're gonna go play. Haven't been on the felt for five days, couldn't play. The game probably won't be as soft. Game selection won't be nearly as good. There'll be fewer games running. Uh, but for all these reasons, I'm excited to vlog this one and I'll come back to you guys with a mid-session or end of session update. Uh, for now, I'm off for the hour drive after I pick my buddy. And uh, for you guys, it'll be like, all right, guys, we buy into the 5.5 five for the 500 max that is allowed here at Commerce Casino, uh, wasting no time to jump into a hand with pocket jacks. Under the gun, it opened to 15, and I 3-bet him to 55, being in early position, wanted to make it a little bit larger because I will likely play this hand out of position. It folds around to the small blind who makes the call, so we're actually going to be in position, and the under the gun player ultimately elects to lay his hand down for this one. So we're heads up to a flop with 130 in the pot, which comes down four, four, four. Small blind checks it over to me, and I gotta imagine that he's probably ace, king, king, queen, two big over cards is likely my guess here. Um, so I'm gonna bet large in the tune of $100, and he quickly makes the call. We go to the turn, which comes the five of diamonds, when he checks it over to me, we were only 500 effective to start this hand, so my only option is to go all in. He does fold and he does roll over ace king. So my read preflop was right. We did get max value out of this hand, I imagine, and happy we didn't see an ace or a king on the turn. All right, this is an interesting hand. One orbit later, we're in under the gun plus one again and this time we look down at pocket kings um i open the action to 25 dollars, and we're going to get one caller from the small blind who was the player from the last hand um, when we had that triple four flop so um, action player solid player from what i had gathered so far and i caught his name and completely forget it now didn't put it in my notes so sorry man uh but a good player all right flop and this one comes jack jack three with two diamonds He's going to check his option over to me, and I'm going to continuation bet. Probably my full range right here, um, but I just make a small bet because I don't think it's going to take much to get somebody off a hand, um, you know, to get them off a lot of hands, unless they're holding a jack or a diamond draw or possibly ace-king, but I think I would have been three bet pre if he had ace-king. So right here when the turn comes, the six of spades, he checks it over to me and this is where I have to go through some analysis in my hand. I did some post hand analysis in a program called Hold'em Lab, which is like Equilabs, but for a Mac. Equilabs does not make a Mac version. So if you're looking for uh, card analysis software for Mac, Hold'em Lab is your place to go. Um, so anyways, I, have, I ran his, a full range of what I believe a small blind might call a bet on the flop and gave him only about 6% of hands from queens down to sevens and then put in some king queen type hands and then put suited connectors uh, down through uh, 9 10 because I think a draw would call um, that flop bet as well. And even putting 
jacks in his range jack 10 queen jack ace jack i put all those in his range i'm still ahead which makes the river call when he leads into me a worthwhile call i only have to win about one out of every five times and he did roll over jack 10 for the winner uh, but again long term it's a profitable call all right, moving on to the next one. I'm in the big blind and we look down at ace five suited. When the action is limped around to me, I throw in another four yellow chips to make the total bet $25. I get uh, one caller from under the gun who was an initial limper and the other limper decides to fold out along with the blinds. And the flop comes down 10 deuce queen with two hearts. So we're definitely not going to slow down on this one. We put out a bet of 20 and get a quick call turn comes the ace of spades so we improve to top pair still have the nut flush draw so definitely not going to slow down on this one we assemble a bet to the tune of 40 dollars, hoping to get value out of any queen holding or any other flush draw no need to bet too big looking to get value he pats the table and lays it down i showed the hand because he had shown a very similar hand earlier in the night which i don't typically do but hey it's good for the table keep them happy and they'll keep donating chips okay this one we're sitting in the cutoff and we look down at a premium ace king offsuit now this is interesting because i play this hand slightly different than i have i'll say learned to play recently so when the action gets around to me in late position with a couple limpers i do put in a raise to 25 dollars to make it 30 total uh, just hoping to take the blinds at this point but happy to go multi-way um, when I get two callers to this hand, i um, playing in between these two players. So we have the small blind and the hijack coming along. So six, eight, seven rainbow is the flop. The small blind checks his cards for quite some time. Kind of a weird uh, tell, if you will. Now, normally what I'll do in a situation like this is I will give up on a hand like this. Notice I didn't bet it. Uh, low cards on the board, very connected, all kinds of two pair sets and straight draws got there from my opponents. And so that's exactly what I do. I check my option on the flop. When the turn brings the queen of clubs, small blind leads out for 35. The hijack comes over the top for 100. And I just lay the hand down. I actually didn't take notes of what ultimately won the hand, but I know that I was extremely beat. All right, moving on to the next one. I am in the small blind. And I look down at Ace 7, suited of the diamond variety. One day somebody called me a diamond cutter because all my diamonds were getting there. This was a couple weeks ago. Anyways, I raise it up uh, from the small blind, showing strength. And we're just going to steal the blinds in this one. I think Ace 7 is a great hand to put in your semi-bluffing range, just to play a balanced range. All right, in the next one, we're in the low jack, and we look down at pocket jacks for the second time in this session. We raise it up to 20. We are going to see calls from the hijack, the cutoff, and then the small blind is going to make the call as well. So we have 85 in going four ways to a flop. Please, dealer, do us right. Queen, king, five, two hearts. Not a whole lot that we connect with on this board, but I was the pre-flop aggressor. I could have all the aces, kings, ace, king, ace, queen, king, queen in my range. So I am going to continuation bet to the tune of $35, uh, you know, the third pot ish size little little more than third pot i guess um we're going to get a call uh, from the player after us and the small blinds going to fold so we're going to go heads up with 155 in and the dealer puts out a seven of spades it really doesn't change anything and you know the way he kind of played this this hand was was weird you know i, I don't really know what to put him on um and when he leads out for 60 dollars I'm really confused. So did he hit his king or hit his queen? A lot of times I'll give folks credit for that. Um, but something about this one just told me that maybe he's on a draw. Uh, maybe I can put some pressure on on the river. Uh, having the jack of hearts, I block some flush draws. Um, and I double block, uh, you know, uh, I was going to say a straight draw. But I guess that really doesn't apply here. So when the river comes down the deuce of hearts, I just quickly put out a $300 bet thinking that this is an a time where I can just steal this pot uh, scare card brings in the flush draw and I think if I had a flush I would have played it the same I would have continued with a flush draw on the flop uh, checked for pot control check call for pot control on the turn 
and then uh, when I get there, make a large bet. I think I would have played it the same way, and uh, it absolutely does work. I would have much preferred to make this bluff with the Ace of Hearts in my hand, but uh, sometimes you just do what you got to do. And definitely putting pressure on a one pair holding, like a king or a queen, uh, you know, hard to call a $300 river bet right there. All right, we've been upgraded to first class, and we like it. We open the action to $25 from middle position with our pocket aces. Low jack's going to make the call for 25, high jack's going to fold, and then the cutoff decides to three bet us, which is music to our ears, to 70 five dollars it's going to fold back around to me and i have a decision to make so um stacks are about 700 effective here the player to my left has um about a thousand i have 700 and the gentleman who three bet has about 350 behind the big decision to make here is do i flat and hope the gentleman to my left throws in calling chips and gold multi-way with pocket aces or do i put in a raise to try to get both of them to call or one to fold out and the initial three better to call or do i put in a large raise targeting the cutoff player all his chips and maybe getting the gentleman to my left to come along so i opt for the third of the options i raise enough to put the cutoff all in but the gentleman to my left decides to fold out so he goes into the tank for just a little bit you know, obviously I'm putting him on kings or queens or ace king, you know, some large pocket pair or two large cards that he would have three bet with. He does not take me as a player who's going to three bet very lightly. So after he's in the tank for some time, he slides his rack of chips in and uh, he did have 350 behind. So we are going heads up to see a run out in a $915 pot. Fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. Well, a little sweat when it comes down six, seven, eight. And then when the turn is a nine, my goodness, pocket tens, please don't have pocket tens or pocket fives or pocket six, sevens, eights or nines. But the river gives us a set. He elects to muck pretty quickly. And we're gonna take down this $915 pot. Uh, we play a couple more hands in this afternoon session. It is time to rack up and say goodbye. Right, guys end of session update sorry i already got home and i'm doing this a little bit late, a little bit late anyways into the game for 500 played for an hour 44 minutes out for 1008 otherwise a 508 profit works out to be a little over 100 bigs let's see 50 i think it's about 52 bigs an hour not bad so i went into the restroom and found myself partaking in some risky activity. No, you sickos. I didn't have a mask on. Anyways, won't do that again. So what do you do when you play for an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, mid-afternoon, you're home by four o'clock and win $508? Yep, you take your pretty lady out for dinner. Yep, going out for sushi. Anyways, guys, thanks for being here. Don't forget if you made it this far, like the video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe below, help the channel grow. It helps the channel out a ton. I appreciate when you subscribe and ring the little notification bell so you get notified of content when I drop it. And as always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you don't already. I really, really appreciate that. Until next time, guys.